All right, I wanted to hop on and talk about an issue that I've been having as a sharpshooter. I tweeted it out and people were like, Agent, how dare you complain? Sharpshooters are so overpowered. First of all, I wanna tell y'all, was I right again? Didn't I tell y'all at launch, well, guys, you're gonna wanna make a sharpshooter. Because as long as you're the best three-point shooter in a video game that has something to do with basketball, stretching the floor is gonna be a huge positive. That's just what I knew. So anyway, you guys are right. Sharpshooters are one of the, if not the best build in the game so far. So people found it almost offensive that I was gonna come on a video and talk about a problem I was having. I was like, y'all can't be that selfish, man. Because last year, even though there were things like screens that benefited me the most of any build, I still talked about it. Because I'm not in the business of just trying to buff my character and nerf everybody else. Regardless of what 2K does, I'm gonna find a way to be effective with all of my builds. I have two builds. I have a Playmaker Primary, Sharpshooter Secondary, and I have a Pure Sharpshooter. I'm about to make a Pure Slasher. I'm gonna have a Shot Crane Primary, Sharpshooter Secondary. I didn't forget about that build. I'm gonna have a bunch of different builds, but I found a bunch of people literally getting angry that I was about to sit here and talk about a real issue that isn't even specific to Sharpshooters. Regardless of who you are, if you're shooting the ball, this affects you. And so I I'm like, bro, do I need to make a video talk about how to guard sharpshooters? Because if it's that much of a problem, I'm a sharpshooter. And when I'm guarding other pure sharpshooters, it's the easiest defensive assignment I have because I make some adjustments. Because keep in mind, if you don't make adjustments and you're leaving him open, what do you expect? That's his core competency. So I'm not gonna complain about the fact that sharpshooters almost 100% of the time get blown by by slashers, shot fitters, playmakers. I get it, 2K's trying to find a balance. That's what they did. I'm not gonna talk about the fact that unless you're six 6'5 or under, you're not gonna have pro animations. And even if you do, you're moving incredibly slow. It's fairly easy to defend. Even if you're spamming screens, all you have to do is switch. That's how that's how they're trying to find balance this year, I understand. But what I was talking about on Twitter was catch and shoots. I was saying, why do I, when I'm dribbling, I have to wait before I pull up for a shot because otherwise I'm gonna lean. And on those leaning shots, completely different release. A lot of the times, a lot slower and the percentages drop. And so I'm saying, yo, 2K, we have Hall of Fame catch and shoot, right? This should be our core, if anything we're good at, we should be good at this. Watching Clay Thompson do it right now on the screen, this is what it looks like. Boom, bop, boom, bop. Every time, you, you don't have to dip, you don't have to do all that extra stuff. It's just getting your shot off as fast as possible. That's what sharpshooters do. That's what I was gonna be talking about. And just before I get into the whole how to guard sharpshooters thing, if you guys are dealing with the same issue, do what I do. I found a fix, at least temporarily. Do a behind the back move before you go out for your shot. Because if you, instead of waiting the whole time, if you're dribbling, you do a behind the back move, it'll let you go up immediately without leaning. Now, this is easier if you have elite animations because you'll have the fastest behind the back moves, but you can also do this if you have pro animations. And I was doing this while I didn't have either. So I'm just letting y'all know that this is an option. If you're dealing with leaning shots, you're trying to dribble pull up immediately behind the back and immediately into your shot. It will save you that extra fraction of a second. That'll make a difference because as a sharpshooter, everyone on the court is trying to close you out, right? So you're trying to get your shot off before everybody realizes you're open. Because once they do, they will collapse on you regardless of whether it's off a screen or a fast break. But let me get into this whole how to guard sharpshooters thing. Now, it's a fairly simple process. The reason I enjoy guarding other pure sharpshooters is because it's a simple thing for the most part. And I'm gonna break it down like this. And I wish I recorded these games because I was playing a, a few comp games and some people, you know, try and drop me off. They see my username, it's Agent Zero. Let me try and drop them off. When I'm playing comp games, I'm not handling the ball. In fact, most of the game, I'm not touching the ball. In fact, there was games where two games straight where I scored zero points, took zero or one shot the entire game. Because as a sharpshooter, I know, regardless of whether I shoot the ball or not, I'm gonna be an effective player on the team. All I have to do is sit in the corner or sit on the hash on limitless range and literally just wait there. Because the second they start to play help off of me, I'm gonna bang a shot. So just by being able to spread the floor and allow my other two teammates when I'm running threes to do a pick and roll, I'm helping the team out. So that's step number one in no circumstance ever, in any situation, regardless of whether your teammate over there has 18 points on his head and it's about to be game point. You do not leave the sharpshooter open. Some of y'all are playing too much help defense and it's killing you. I'm telling you there is no justifiable reason to leave anybody with a primary sharpshooter wide open for three. If you're playing against trash opponents, if someone's primary playmaker, secondary, sharpshooter, you can get away with leaving them open because they have to release the ball well to hit it. But when you're guarding a sharpshooter, there is zero reason why you should ever do that. You should always be a hand length away. Now, most of you know this, but still, your habit is to help on defense when your teammate is having issues. When you recognize you're playing a pure sharpshooter, snap out of that habit because there's no circumstance unless you're running zone why they should not be somebody sticking on him no matter what. And when you're playing against 
comp opponents who know what they're doing. This is more than pure sharpshooters. This is any build. I was running with the pure slasher on Pro Am the other day, who's hitting so consistently from three. I'm like, damn. So this game isn't really much different when it comes to the sliders from 2K17. If you know what you're doing and you know how to release the ball, you have a good release, you're gonna be able to hit shots. Now, if you guys missed my jump shot video, I'm gonna link it with a card above because I dropped my Pro-Am and my Park jump shot. If you're having trouble finding a jump shot, that will help you. All right, so let's say you're no longer playing help defense. The next thing people about to say is, Agent, off of screens. And you're right, If especially if you're guarding a brick wall screen, it's gonna be very difficult to fight over the screen. Whether you're going over, you're never gonna go under on a sharpshooter, right? The second you go under on a screen, sharpshooter's gonna shoot the ball from limitless range. You can kind of get away with it now that the game's kind of new, but the second you start to do this a month, two months into launch when everybody's gonna have their badges, especially from limitless range, you're literally asking to get torched. So you don't wanna hedge for the most part, that's dangerous. If you're on the park or you're on pro and you're playing man on man, which most of the time you are, unless you're playing comp opponents on pro in which you're running zone, where this doesn't apply, you always wanna switch on screens. Now, I know you guys are thinking, it's age, I'm playing with randoms, all right? Sometimes I'm playing with randoms and I can't switch on screens. I'm gonna teach y'all what I do on Pro-Am, because every time I play walk on Pro-Am, aside from like maybe five or six times, it's been by myself on my grind. This is what I do to get teammates to listen to me. Now, let me get in character. Yo, pass me the f ball when I'm open, bitch. I'm the best sharpshooter in the game. Hit the open teammates. Stop trying to dribble so much. I can't exaggerate, that's literally what I do. And you'd be surprised to know, and maybe it's because I have a high overall, and it's not because they know who I am, my username, because I was doing this before I even dropped a video where you guys saw my PSN. When you yell at your teammates, even if you don't know what you're talking about, if you pretend to know what you're talking about and you're playing with scrubs, they're gonna be like, oh, that guy knows what he's talking about. Let's start hitting the open teammates. And sometimes it also means that other players are gonna start turning their mics on. So they stop playing so selfishly. I do this almost every game on walk on. Like you just have to get mad. I don't know what it is, but it works for me. So I don't know if that's gonna work for y'all, but you should try it if you're playing with a teammate of bums. Occasionally you can get a teammate that's still regardless of shooting up straight breaks on poor attempts. If your teammate is not gonna help switch over because you're playing with randoms, then you just have to hedge hard over the screen. You have to see the screen coming so you can adjust and you have to break out of L2. You don't wanna be holding L2. You have to sprint through the screen because if you're not sprinting through the screen, you're gonna get stuck, especially if you're guarding brick wall and you're leaving a sharpshooter wide open. So the screens is it's a difficult procedure because sharpshooters, although they don't have good dribble moves, a screen has an opportunity to get you open regardless, and you wanna nerf that as much as possible because if you even leave a sharpshooter open for a split second, and I'm talking about a split second, there's a new shot feedback system in the game. Contests don't mean the same thing they meant last year. Last year, if it looked like a contest, chances are it was a contest. This year, there's a chance you can jump towards a guy and you showed up late to the contest, but because you have a large wingspan or you're a tall player, it looks like it should have been contested, but on the sharpshooter screen, it'll say wide open. Now, the best way to find out what this looks like for you is to hop on my career because a lot of the time, the AI will show up late, especially if you watch my badge tutorial video where I showed you the best way to get the sharpshooter badges, I was showing you a way to abuse the AI to get limitless range quickly because it doesn't count as a shot contest. This, the system is different this year. Over time, you guys will learn what counts and what doesn't count as a shot contest. But too many times have people been telling me, agent, that was contested, how did you make that? But on the screen it said wide open or lightly contested. And lightly contested for a sharpshooter basically means non-existent. If you have a 99 contested shot three, you have all your badges and you shot a good release on a very good jump shot and it's lightly contested, it's gonna hit. So you have to, no matter what, when I'm speaking hands length, you always have to be ready to smother the sharpshooter. That's how close you have to be. This year, there's no glitch animation where you can run this way, set a screen to glitch back this way and boost back faster. So even off of like when you're doing a check ball on the park, it's difficult without screens for a sharpshooter to get open. So let's do this. If a sharpshooter is getting open without a screen on you, it just means you need things to work on defensively because in no circumstance should that happen unless you're just like a casual player on the game and you're trying to learn the game and we understand. Even with those screens, switch. If you can't switch, you need your teammate to hedge if you can get him to, unless you're playing with randoms and they don't know how to hedge, but you wanna fight over the screen, you never wanna go under. And it's just that simple. For me, I have a blast guarding sharpshooters because most of the time I'm just standing there. Because sharpshooters have a difficult time getting open this year, 
All I have to do is make sure I keep an eye on him. I'm not ball watching. I'm watching my assignment more than I'm watching the possession because I trust my teammates can play defense over there and take care of their own situation. Occasionally, they'll get beat, but in no circumstance is it okay for me to leave my assignment that's going to hit a wide open three almost 100% of the time and play defense on some other man who's gonna drop a two. Of course, some other obvious defensive things. If you're gonna play help for whatever reason, then make sure your team rotates. If you don't know how to rotate defensively, and even comp players don't get this right, so it's difficult to rotate in the game. If you're playing help and someone calls switch, whatever the case is, you wanna make sure another player is running to guard that player because he's gonna be the most important player to defend because you don't wanna drop a three, you'd rather give up a two. So that's it, man. Uh, it's not complicated. I didn't say anything groundbreaking in this video, but I just said stuff that if you do, you should no longer have this problem. Not you should, you will no longer have this problem. Because for me, the most difficult positions to defend are the ones that can get themselves open. Because people can just blow by me anytime they want, it's very difficult for me to play proper defense. As a sharpshooter, they just get by you. And so when I'm playing, when I see a pure sharpshooter, <laughs> He's not gonna blow by me. I'm, just, I'm ecstatic. In fact, sometimes like a pure sharpshooter will be matched up against a big on the other team. And I'm like, yo, can we switch? Cause I'd much rather have that assignment than to have somebody who can dribble and get themselves open. Because for me, that's a way more difficult assignment. So it's just a matter of playing to your pros and cons, right? If you're having this much of a trouble with it and you just can't find a way, agent, I'm doing everything you said, you, then you have to find a lockdown defender to play with. Because I know some of y'all refuse to acknowledge it, but lockdown defenders are really good builds this year. I have yet to see a pure lockdown on the park though. I've occasionally seen them on Pro-Am, but I'm telling you, if it's this much of an issue for you, the most offensive oriented archetype, you can counter it with the most defensive oriented archetype any time of the day. Cause y'all seem to forget that. There's a lot of playmakers, shot creators, slashers, and even other sharpshooters talking about some, oh agent, I can't believe the shot contest didn't work. And you know, occasionally I'll complain about that too when it's a heavy shot contest on a contested layup a shot creator took. But shot creators have difficult shots, so I understand. But y'all forgetting that lockdowns exist. I haven't been seeing many lockdowns on the game in general. I've seen some big men, like two-way defenders, some rebounding defenders, but I've yet to see a lockdown guard. So if you're a lockdown guard and you're hearing all of this about sharpshooters, you're thinking, agent, I know, I've been Ding up sharpshooters, cause that's what I do. And because you have a high shot contest stat, because you're a lockdown, your contest means more, so you can get away with lightly contesting sharpshooters and they'll still be missing those shots. On top of the fact that if you have defensive stopper, they won't be shooting with Hall of Fame limitless range, for me, as a sharp or with any of my builds, the second I see a lockdown guarding me, oh, it's a lockdown guarding me, y'all. Damn it, because you can't be pulling from Limitless like you used to. You can't be shooting through contests with good releases, good jump shot like you used to. Your whole game plan goes out the window because in this game, dual archetypes this year, you have to be able to adjust. When you see players on the other team, adjust. The reason I say it's easy for me to guard sharpshooters is not because I guard them the same way I guard everybody else. It's because I adjust, guard them differently, and it's a pretty simple process. You don't have to chase them around the floor because they're slow. <laughs> so, I mean, sometimes you're guarding a 6'3 sharp and they might've done the animation glitch and that's a whole nother situation, right? If they have elite animations, then what could you do? Now, that's a situation in which I would be okay with people complaining. If if a build that shouldn't have elite animations has elite animations, oh, agent, I have to guard a sharpshooter through screens and he's using elite animations? Understandable, right? But for the most part, I haven't seen that yet. I haven't came across, I came across a couple guys that did the contact animation glitch I seen, but not as many as I would have thought. So anyway, if you guys enjoyed, I'm trying to be helpful, all right? Cause it's not difficult to guard sharps this year, although they are effective. So it's a balance. You just have to know what you're doing and you'll DM up nice. If you enjoyed, drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new. I'm gonna catch y'all later. I'm out. Peace.